What's going on, everybody? This is Derek Elston, and you're listening to Ball from Assembly Hall. And if you're like me, and you like to have a little skin in the game, make it a little more interesting, well, today's your lucky day. I'm proud to tell you that I am Underdog Sports' newest partner. And on top of that, I got even better news for you. They're currently running a promo right now for all new users. Go to the App Store, download Underdog Sports, and use promo BFAH24. That's BFAH24. If you have the app and you haven't deposited any money, the promo is still going to work for you. What are you waiting on? Get started today and come play alongside me all season long at Underdog Sports. <laughs> What's going on, guys? We back. Another episode of Ball from Assembly Hall. I'm right here, your man Christian Watford, right here with my main man, Derek Elston. We got a lot to talk about. Jam packed episode. Um, you know, more so than the games, we just gonna talk about a lot about the direction of the program, Derek. What you think about that, bro? Honestly, bro, I I, I think that's the you know, we don't need to talk <laughs> about the wins and losses anymore, man. We, I mean, we're we gonna cover the we're gonna cover the last night game a little bit. Nebraska, you know, obviously, obviously we gotta cover that just because of the the effort that was shown and stuff like that. And we'll get into that a little bit in, later on in the episode, man. But, you know, we got a lot to talk about, bro. It's a lot of stuff swirling around. It's a lot of rumors going around. It's a lot of upset Hoosier fans around the world. Yeah. Um. You got you got something to get off your chest, and I got you know. My, I'm gonna put my little. I'm gonna put my little two cents in on it as well, man. So how how you been, though, bro? What's been going on with you lately? Yeah, I'm good, baby. I'm just you know I'm like you. I'm you know I'm not recovering from sickness like you. So I, I I'm not right. to that bullet, but. I'm good, man. Just day by day over here. Yep, you getting some sleep? You finally getting some sleep yet? Finally, we're at, we're out of the window. We're out of the window. Oh, I man. told I told Caroline, just hey, let me take care of Emmy. If she cries during the night, I promise you, you won't have to worry about it. I'll take care of it. Take care of it. But <laughs> she's been good. good. She's been really good. That's good. That's good, bro. That's good. Everything well, good. good. Yeah, everything good, bro. Um, you know, a little sleep regression here and there this past week. You know how they go. It, it uh, It'll pop up on you a little bit like that, and you'd be like trying to figure out what's going on. But it's part of it. We all right? Yeah. Let's dive into it. See. Let's, let's, let's get into it, man. Into it. Let's get to it, man. Um. Uh. Obviously, you know, coming off a loss last night, lost by fifteen, down by twenty at the half. Um. Give me your initial thoughts. Give me, give me you know, I mean, this 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 conversation, I'm sure, spill over to other things. So talk to me. I was gonna say, man, it's a, it's not even like I, I'm sick and tired of talking about the shooting woes. I'm sick and tired of. Just, I'm just, I'm sick and tired of most of it. See? Like, you got, right. you got a Northwestern game that you get down by 15. This game, you get down by 20, and they start the half with a dunk to go down 22. My whole thing with this episode, see what is just, bro, it's effort, bro. There's no I, doubt about it. No, I mean, there's nothing else we need to cover. Like, I'm sick and tired of, of, of watching this team because I get it, right? Like, we're not mm -hmm. as polished as we thought we were going to be. We've been saying that from game one this season. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not as good as we should be. Okay, no right. problem. Yeah, we don't shoot the ball as well as we should be. No problem. But one thing that Indiana fans, and, and this goes like – throughout the entire nation, I think, is what you're seeing on TV. Just looks like these guys have packed it in, have bought their spring break tickets, they're ready to get on a flight and just call it in. And it's like, I don't know, it, it hurts you as a fan. It's embarrassing as a player. Like, that's that's where a lot of this frustration has come from, bro. No doubt, bro. I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, You know, watching the game in the first half, it did look like, like, I don't know, man, like they wouldn't respond in the co respond in the coach Woods, you know, and that's at this point, um, that's what you don't want to see as a Hoosier alum, as a as a former Hoosier player. You don't want you don't want to see guys not responding to the coach. Uh, you know, it makes it seem as if he's lost control of the locker room. It makes it makes it seem like he can't get through the guys anymore. Mm -hmm. But I do want to give a little credit. Um, you know, I, that's how I was feeling in the first half. Like, man, like these guys ready to pack it in. We probably won't finish over 500 but then we come out the second half and we respond you know what i'm saying so i think it's still i, I do want to give him credit because i think they're still trying to fight for him i don't know what he went into halftime and said i mean we're down 20 it's a, i mean it's a it's a lot to be said 
or, or or not a lot to be said. I mean, you go, you guys gonna go out here and fight? We're gonna get beat. We're gonna get embarrassed by thirty, or we can try to come back and make this thing a game and fight. And I think we did come out and show some fight. But Derek, the fact of the matter is, bro, we we're, we're not a very good team. We can't sustain our energy. We right. can't create our own energy. Um, you know, looking at the first half of that game, bro, we only, bro, we had probably like four or five fouls, bro, down twenty. I know. Like, if, if you're gonna do that, like, if we're gonna be down twenty, like, let's at least be in a bonus. Let's at least be right. fouling, <laughs> right? Like, playing hard, taking out, you right. know, taking somebody's head off or something. Like, that's the whole issue I got with it. And you know what I'm saying? I think it, it starts at the top, bro. Like, I I, I, I try to cover it, but it, it starts at the top, man. They something's going on, and these guys are not responding. And, and, and for me, see what it's not like you're playing every day. Like when we were playing, C, it was like one through six was a battle, bro. You mm-hmm. might have seven through 10, 11. I mean, we were number one. So like we were going to get everybody's best shot. Seven right. through 11 was probably like, all right, we got to play, you know, three quarters of a basketball game. Then we can come out and let everybody else get in. The bottom of the Big Ten was the bottom of the Big Ten. And like I said, you, you got your best right. punch to start the game. But at the end of the day, we're pulling out. Bro, this is the greatest season of Big Ten basketball to get a win in. And Oh, my God, because it's not a real good – it's not a good conference this year. Outside, the Big outside Ten of is Purdue. really shitty this year. It's, yes. It really is. Outside of Purdue. That's it. Outside of Purdue, there is nobody that you're looking at like, man, we can't – there's no way we get that win. Right. No doubt about and, it. And, and, and it's 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 Northwestern who has a player injured out for the rest of the year. One of their two-headed snakes is gone. And big man's got more offensive rebounds than we do collectively as a team. Last night, Nebraska, Tomanaga looks like an all-star every time we go against him. And it's right. like, what, what are we pre- – like, there's so many things throughout the game. Like, my man started the game three for four from three – and the big sets a screen, um, rink mass sets a three a screen on the three point line, and we think it's a good idea to go under the screen on Tominaga to blaze yeah. this for another one. Yeah, that that that, like, that 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 tells me right there that we're not we're not. A, I I just can't believe that the coaches that that's in the scouting report they tell me that we're not locked in. Um, right. And we got and, and that's all it could be. Like you can't tell me that uh, Coach Kenya and Ya and 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 um. B. Walsh and those guys, you know, came up with that plan to go under on 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 a guy like on a with with the laser like Tom right. Nigel, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. That just tell me, bro, we're not locked in, we're not focused, we're not giving full effort, man. And it's just it's just sad because you would think like at this point in our career, um, I mean, at, at this point of the, of the season, like it's no way we would come out. Derek, I remember being like in in 2009 or 2010, like we was getting our ass kicked, bro. But we played hard, bro. That's oh, one thing we did, bro. Like, we knew coming out, like, we were going to be prepared. We were going to play hard. Because we didn't. We knew we had hell to pay. To, you know what I'm saying? We knew we had hell to pay if we didn't. That's right. But, but that's one thing we did, bro. We Regardless of, of what we did, the effort was there. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at the Kim Palm, bro. This is the lowest we've been since we were freshmen, there. Since T. John Job, see what? Come on, <laughs> man. Come on. Come on. <laughs> That's what I said, man. Like, you know, I don't think, like I told you, like I told you, we talked about it the other episode, bro. I don't think we're in position to to make a head coaching change. Um, I don't, I don't agree with that. Just because, I, bro, honestly, I don't think I use a really hot job right now. I don't think we would get the type of coach that these that that the who's your fans think we can get, bro. Like, I just don't believe that. Like, we're not the only school with money. We're not. I don't even, bro. These kids yeah. these days, bro. They don't even. They don't even realize that we're a blue blood program. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, like. Honestly, and you've said that before. These are Generation Z kids, bro. These kids were born in the 2000s, bro. They don't know nothing about IU basketball, bro. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like it's hard to really sell these kids on just Assembly Hall. Like, granted, you go in there, it's magical in there, but it's hard to sell kids and get kids to come just to be a part of what, what they're seeing on the court. And I think that's what that's what's transpired over into our recruiting class. We only got one recruit, bro. Yeah. We're gonna be in the portal or we're gonna be bad next year, Derek. That's that's my whole thing, see. <laughs> and that's and you talked about this a couple episodes ago about what Woodson says in his post game. And in his post games he keeps referring to bad shooting nights because they can't shoot. Well you don't have a good shooting team. He keeps talking about we're young. 
I don't know why he keeps saying that we're a young team, see what? Because we only <laughs> play two freshmen. We yeah, that's only a fact. play two. And he that's keeps talking about, like, I don't know this team, see? And what happens next year when you go into the portal and get three, four, five guys? It's going to be a brand new team. A brand new so you're team, not going to know them either. You're not. It's, and that's just the way of college basketball now. Like, everybody, that's why I tell people, bro, it's so hard to build, like, a real culture in this time in you know, unless you like Purdue, because Coach Painter got it going over there. He didn't, he didn't establish himself. He knows the guys he want. Um, you know what I'm saying? But, like, it's other than that, bro, it's so hard to establish a culture because, especially if you come in in this point in time, um, you know, like the way it is, it's so hard to establish just because of the transfer portal. And, you know, NIL, everybody got money. Um, I know I talk to a lot of people that say, well, we got money. We should be able to. Go get this type of player. Go get this type of caliber player, bro. Everybody got money, bro. You're right. And they're getting money. Uh, and and we know how this thing go, Derek. They're getting nil, and they're getting someone to everybody has money, bro. Right. And you look at who's saying? available. See what? Look who's coming available. Like Ohio State. You kidding me? You know what type of facilities and resources you have at Ohio State? That's right. going to be available. Like, right. there's a lot of schools that are going to be available right now. See, and you look at Indiana, and you see like. Okay, over the weekend, we just lost Derek Queen to Maryland. Yeah, they hurt. That, so that hurt. now you're looking at it like, oh, is uh, is Liam, is, is he for sure going to stay? Right, yeah. You look at it, you, you look at it like scary. that. I mean, it's just a tough situation, man. I don't know how we can um, – it's on the it's – it's on the coaches, bro, on whether this thing on, – on, on how this thing goes. I mean, they got to be able to sell a – Sell a product that makes it where kids want to come to IU. Right now, I don't think kids lining up to come to IU, bro. I'm just sorry. I don't think nobody. For one, the way the Big Ten is this year, as shitty as the Big Ten is this year, I don't think people lining up to come play in the Big Ten. It's just not a fun. Like when you watch it, right. it's just not a fun conference. It's not a conference that gets up and down. Um, you know, it, it's it's on the downside this year. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be even harder for us to to bang the transfer portal and get guys to come in, bro. Yeah, yeah. See, for you made you made a point that I really wanted to dive in right there. Like, uh -huh. On the coaches, like you know the coaching staff, you know, you, you got the assistants that are just busting it, right? Right. One thing that I wanted to dive into on this episode today was talking about like I not being a fly on the wall in there anymore, not knowing what Woody's emphasizing, what he's talking about, what he's preaching, whatever. And I don't want anybody to take this the wrong way, right? Because we had, you know, super successful careers. We were able to bring it back to prominence. Right. One thing that always rings true, at least in my household. Okay. My dad tells the story of Dean Smith. For you guys listening, don't know, my dad played for Dean Smith at North Carolina. And my dad used to tell me, you know, we, we would have ran through a wall for Dean Smith because of how much he loved us, how much he the things he did for us. And you see that a lot with these Bob Knight former players. All these no Bob doubt. Knight guys say they, they no were doubt. running the ball for this guy. For no. us, see what? We had to, we, we would have, but we had to run through a ball <laughs> for right. Coach Green. Just because if you didn't, like you said earlier, who knows what the next day, what the week was. I mean, you go, I mean, there's story after story after story with, it is. you know, it is. But I, I do want to say about that running through a wall, we would have ran through a wall for each other. And I think that's what oh, made no it. Doubt. No that's doubt. what made it the difference. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But continue and, on and, but continue on with your point. I got but, you. And that's what I wanted to talk about too. It, it was it was run through a wall for Cream, but it was also us huddling each other up and saying like, yo, this shit is so bad. Like we gotta start playing for each other. And that's what we did. And that's when we started to get it to really, really connect. And it's funny you talked about the past because I also did some research. And I don't know, and I don't see it, but I don't know what Woody is saying to certain guys, but certain guys you can't just, I, what I should say is there are certain ways to get to certain guys. All right, okay, no doubt. I took myself, I, took, I put three guys in this situation. For me, when Coach Green started jumping my ass, that was more of a, all right, you know, F you, Watch this. I'm going to prove to you that I can do it because I, I wanted to earn the respect with right. uh, with and, Vic. A, and a lot of us did. And a lot of us. Yeah, did. for sure. Right. With Vic, I remember Coach Crean pulling this out three off the top of my head, maybe more. But I remember Coach Crean pulling out a chair 
and saying mm-hmm. Vic doesn't want to play today. He's going to sit down for the rest of the practice. And Vic would try to get up and do the conditioning with us, and Coach Cream would sit him down, and that would get him going. And with you, see what I will never, ever, ever forget this. In 2010, 2011, we were at Michigan State. We were in already a film. Know. <laughs> I already know. I already we were know. in a film session that I'm not shitting you, listeners. Lasted at least three hours. We watched one clip for probably an hour. Fuck at one clip, and Coach Cream. Of course, while well, I was fucking up, but yeah, yeah. and Coach <laughs> Cream kept calling you lazy, and you had lost it. You had lost your mind. And you and Coach Crean were yelling at each other. And you start saying, fuck it. Don't play me. Don't put me in the game. Don't put me in the game. Fuck it. Don't put me in the game. Right. To the point where we were like, Siwa, shut up, bro. Just like, just right. let this go. Let this go. And you weren't letting it go. And what'd you do? The next day you went out, had 21-7. And the game went into overtime. And right. we could have won it. So, like, how... How is Woody getting to these guys or to your point earlier? Like, have you just lost them? Like, have you, is there no way? And and it it falls a little bit on the players too, because at no point throughout the game, do you see players just like huddle up and be like, bro, this is fucking embarrassing. What are we doing? But like also coach, you got to find a way to get to these dudes to get, you don't have to be down 20 to start playing hard. You don't. Like the same thing happened at Ohio State. See, we were down 15. We we started saying like, "Oh shit, we're actually not really out of it. We're still making shot." Like we scored 70 points last night. See, what? Well, that's pretty good for us. Yeah, hell yeah, no doubt. Like, like, why does it take being being down 20, being down 22, being down 15 to be like, "All right, we gotta start picking it up and playing now." Right, 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 right. At some point, you're just like, man. Especially last night, you're like, bro, put in the walk-ons and the subs and just like, yeah, let them run through. Like, at least, yeah, just, just bang play around or do something. Yeah, yeah. I and agree, it's hard to see, I, right? Because I make that statement, and then I say, like, you look it's out hard. Galloway you know why is, I say that? You know why ahead, I say it's ahead. hard, Derek? You know why I say it's hard? Because I look back on that type of shit, and we look back on that film situation in, at Michigan State. I just don't think a lot of guys are putting up with that shit, Derek. You might lose them for the whole fucking next year if you do some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's, it's possible. Like, like, like I was talking to y'all, man. We don't know who's gonna be in the portal next year. We don't know. We don't know if CJ gonna coming back. We don't know if Mbako coming back. We don't know. You know, it's 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 a delicate situation. I think Coach Cream knew. That's one thing I will give Coach Cream all his props that he knew how to push buttons. He knew yes. what to push us. He knew he knew what to say to us. He knew, bro. That was a we was going over that film. That was one of the few games we won in the Big Ten, and he and it was a three hour film session. Yeah. It was like Illinois, and we actually won that game. I know. You know, know that's what that's what sent me that's what sent me sent me over the top. I'm like, you know, we bro, we we only went in a few Big Ten games, and you and you got something to say like on this one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he knew, bro. He knew it was, it was gonna push me. Um, you know, we I went. I never forget. I went back to their room that night. Like, damn, Derek, I don't even know if I'm starting next game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like shit. I I just did all that. Like, fuck, bro. I don't even, I don't know if I'm starting next game. But you know. <laughs> That's what you can't really get emotional, man. I think I think that's why I respect Coach Cream to this day, bro. Like, uh, you know, the respect factor was there. I think we grew from that. No doubt. I think we, I think we, uh, you know what I'm saying? We matured on that. And that was the game. I uh, actually that was the game. The, the next game, I broke my hand. I mean, that that yeah. game. Yeah. That, that game, game, I broke my hand. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I still played well. You said 21. I think I had 25 though, but it's cool. But uh. <laughs> I broke my I broke my hand, bro. And Coach Cream was crying, and you know we just I was gonna say all, that was the thing. We were all emotional because of, you know what I'm saying because of how it transpired and stuff like that. But he knew he knew how to push buttons, and we definitely grew from that moment, and it, and it propelled us. You know what I'm saying further down the line of our career. But you're right, there. We got to find a way to get through to these guys right now. I don't see that fire on the court, like even with Galloway, bro. I see it sometimes, but I don't see it as frequent as I did, um, you know, in the past. Yeah, like I don't know if it's just weighing on them. You know, I'm, they booing them at halftime. Derek, a lot of uh, I don't know if we mentally tough to take that. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's a it's a it's such a tough, delicate situation because I don't see a lot of confidence over there on that bench. Uh, um, yeah. I know guys are better players than what they're what they're putting out there on the court, Derek. And it all, but you know how it is, bro. The confidence you're, as a hooper, yeah. confidence is everything. And yeah. I'm not sure, and I'm not sure we pouring internet into that as so much as. 
so much negative stuff circul circulating around the program. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to really pour into that, bro. And that's what I see right now. Well, that's what when I when I talk about Galloway, that's the thing that I want to hone in on is like it just looks to me like my man has got so much on his shoulders. That, no doubt. You know, you're asked to guard a guy who's going crazy right now. Then you're supposed to bring the ball up and you're supposed to make shots. It's just it weighs so heavy. And every time you turn around, the ball's going through the hoop and we're not getting the same result on the other end. So, like you said, it's all confidence. It's like, man, we're going through all of this and we're still getting blown out like that that weighs real heavy. That make you start wondering, like, do I really even like this shit? Because that's where we oh, were freshmen and sophomore yeah. year. I was like, damn, do we even like this shit? But not for real. <laughs> but for, for real, that's that's real talk, man. It, it, it weighs on you. I promise. You know, I tell everybody, I promise they ain't trying to miss free throws. I promise those guys are not trying to miss free throws. They're not trying to miss wide open threes. They're not trying to do it. Like these student athletes, bro, they go out and they practice. They give their time. They they dedicate a lot of stuff into this, you know what I'm saying? And fortunately, that's just the way it works. Like, like, but like I said, Derek, I want to hone back on this, bro. I don't think we in the position to go get another coach, bro. I just don't think I just, Derek. When I look back, when I look back over what we've done and what I, I, I you over the last, um, you can say even ten years or since Coach Crane left, it hasn't been too much success, bro. We went to the tournament the last two out of the three years. I mean, Woody went to the tournament his first two years. Yeah. Now we, we, you know, a non-tournament team. I, I just, you know, our expectations around circulating around IU, bro, is just so much, bro. Like it's just so high. Like I just yeah. don't understand it. You know, yeah. I do understand it because we got a lot of rich tradition and stuff like that. But like, it's it's two thousand twenty-four. There, nobody really scared of IU basketball like that no more, bro. Well, to be quite honest with you. That's the, the the crazy thing is, see what? The old statement used to be, when you come to Assembly Hall, you don't get a win in there. And a lot of night guys are able to say that. We're able to say that. Yogi's group is able to say that. Right now, see what? The only team that can't get a win in Assembly Hall is us. Right. <laughs> no doubt. No <laughs> doubt about it, bro. It's like, I, I just, you know, nobody, nobody's, nobody's scared to come in there, there. Nobody, you know, and that's just a testament over what we've done over the last, since Art, you know, since Archie been there toward the, you know, it's just been that type of program, bro. Yeah. And it's and and, you know, that's why I say I don't think it's fair to Mike Woodson to be talking about firing him. He's went to the tournament the last two out of three years. Granted, it just looks so bad this year. You're right. And I think that's what people got a hard time dealing with is the way it looks, and the way he's responding to the media and the stuff he's saying. It just feels like like we're headed down a dark – you look at the recruiting. It just feels like we're headed down a dark tunnel. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And sure. they don't want to go through that again. I, I agree. I, they don't want to go through that again. But I think we hired him. Um, this our guy. Um, yeah. He played at IU. Like, we got to get behind and rally behind him, bro, because he, he, he said it to himself on the radio. He's not going nowhere. Right. right. You know? And right. for him to say that, that that speaks volume to me. That tells me this guy got all the confidence in the world. Like, like no matter yeah. what, he's six, I don't know, 66 or 64. He he said he feel good. He ain't going nowhere. So, you, I mean, you might as well, bro, get behind him. And and, and what, what else we going to do? That That's like it, it's so funny now, and I'm able to laugh <laughs> about it now because, you, you know, all the people that, man, I was on staff for his Queen's last two years. And you know what? There are a lot of rumblings. And, you know, be that as it may, if OG doesn't get hurt, is Coach Crean still there? The the funny thing is. For sure he is. If, the funny thing about all of it is, see what? They hated him. His last they two did. years. They and now, did. And now they want to talk about, you know, what he said and what he used to say to the media and how much he fought for the program. And, bro, they hated him. Yeah, they, they, they so so they what makes you think? Door. So like, what makes you think anything changes with Woodson? Like it's the same. Like with all this firing that we do at IU, and you guys want to fire someone else, and you want to get in someone new. What happens if they don't change the program and get results? It's like we wanted Coach Crean out. We I know what it out. is. We got to get him out of there. And now everybody's backtracking and saying like. I don't, there's so many. We hadn't looked. Oh, we, we hadn't looked good since Tom yeah. Crean. And, uh, exactly. Oh, man, bring him back and all this shit, bro. Bro, the fact of the matter is, bro, if they fire Coach Woodson, bro, people are not going to line up for that job. That speaks volume on how you handle business. 
Um, that speaks volume to other coaches. Like, God damn, this man went to the tournament two out of three years and you fire him. Yeah. You know? Like yeah. who would what coach would want to take on that type of in you know, that type of thing where they go in and, and they dealing with something like that. And no, don't no coach want to go into that type of situation, bro. I'm right. sorry. It just right. it just doesn't happen. I don't and especially no no, you may be able to get a uh, um a good mid major coach. A, I mean, I almost said great mid major coach um, to come in there and take the realm to that. But bro, from the from the, the names I be hearing, I don't see nobody coming in doing taking that, taking you know, like heaven I don't, forbid, I don't, heaven forbid, it did happen, and they have a terrible first year. Well, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no doubt about it, bro. That ain't that ain't that ain't fair to those coaches, man. That ain't fair. Um to nobody coming in having to deal with those type of circumstances. And I hate, you know, I, I talk, I talk to Cody y'all and, you know, it's just negative, bro. People jumping in their DMs, people reaching out to them. You know what I'm saying? People, people, people threatening them. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just unfortunate, bro. Like I, I hate to, you know, deal with that. I just don't, I just don't think it's time. You know, I, I don't think it's time to do nothing like that right now, bro. And I you see what if I, if, and I, I Chime in with with what you think you would change here. But if I were still on staff and Woodson was talking to me and he said, what changes need to be made around here? I'd say, man, coach, we have to stop worrying about getting five stars, man. Get guys who are just absolute dogs because Indiana with five stars outside of Cody, Thomas Bryant, like Five stars. Noah there. Bunley. Noah Bunley. But he didn't do any. He, he didn't do anything. See what? His Noah numbers were good. His numbers were good. His numbers, his numbers were, good. were good. But we didn't do anything with him. Romeo, we didn't do anything with him. Like where and Baco, like bro, you just got to get dudes who are bought into the program and. I no, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you what you got to get, Derek. <clears throat> in the days, in the days realm of things, you got to get older guys, bro. You got to get 23-year-old guys, 22, 23, you may, damn near 24 guys, bro. People <laughs> are out winning. there. <laughs> they out there. People are winning with those type of guys. That's what I'm saying. We got to hit the portal and get some older guys in there. Because the fact of the matter is, unless he's really special, yeah, a five-star freshman really not coming in impacting college basketball like that, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying? He got he got to really be special. I, I see a right. few of them around. I see them, a few. I see a few of them around college basketball. Yeah, you know, but they but they're few far in between. I mean, the older teams are winning right now. You look at yeah. you, you look at the older teams, bro. They're the teams that's winning right now in yeah. college basketball. And I, I just think we gotta we gotta hit that portal, bro. You gotta get guards. See what we gotta. We get got hang on out there. We got we got a lot of people over there. And you know, you you said if if, if Woody asked you, I just think, bro. We got a lot of people over there that don't deserve to have that uniform on. And that's just as blatantly as, as I can see it. I see a lot of guys over there that should not have an IU jersey on. I don't want to speak. I'm not going to name nobody and do all that. But it's a few guys over there, bro, that we got to we gotta make changes. I'm yeah. sorry. No doubt. <laughs> we we got to make changes. And it's so hard. Everybody want to talk about development, development, development. It's so hard to develop, guys, when – you really on a one year basis with them. You really on a, you, you know what I'm saying. You really got them. You, you really don't point. have them that. You really don't have them that long to really develop. Nobody's sticking around. You know what I'm saying. People get developed over like over time. Or you got older guys. You know what I'm saying. Nobody's really sticking around for development like we like we did there. Yeah. You know those time, bro. That, these kids, they, they don't know how much work we really put in on development. Right. It's not happening no more. There. It's just not. Kid, kids are not built like that. They're going to leave, bro. They're going to leave. What, that's what I'm wondering. I'm They're going to go get some like, more money there. You can't pay them. They're going to go get some more money, bro. Yeah. I know damn sure we would have lost Seawatt after sophomore year. Goddamn right. I would have been out there. Especially, especially the NIL would have been out there. I know I would have took me a little bang and went somewhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I I'm do, just, I do want I'm to just see keeping it. it honest, though. I, I, and I do wonder, though, to your point, like I, the, the three man, the four man individuals that we were doing, having to do drills over 10, 11, 12 times just to get it right. Like how many dudes are, are wanting to do that? But it's the ones who do do it that are successful. But to your point, man, it's a new it's a new game. It's a new day, a new era. It's a new, it's a new day, Derek. It's a new day, bro. Kids come in. How much what, what that bag talking about? Exactly. Yeah. How you gonna how you gonna how you gonna convince how you gonna convince those type of guys to really 
do that type of stuff when they when they when they when you when they go out to their car, they ride in foreign vehicles. They they doing whatever they want to do around campus. They, you know what I'm saying, bro. That that money that money at this age, unless you really like special, it, it it'll take over you, bro. Yeah. It will take it it'll, it'll take over you, and it, and it, and, I'm, and I'm like I don't blame them because shit, you know they deserve it. I'm not like I tell you, but they they deserve it. But like it's gonna weed out the guys that really want it. You know what I'm saying because. You you gonna look at your account and you are gonna feel like you're like you made it, yeah. And I and think that's what's happening okay. right now with a lot, and that's what I think is happening right now with a lot of development. Guys just look at their look at their bank accounts and they see shit. I'm good. Yeah. The the thing that's really really eye opening now that we're a season away from him and talk to Brian a lot about. Jalen Hood Shafino. He Brian used to tell me all the time the kid doesn't care about how many NIL dollars he had, and he was going to get them, and I'm sure he did get them, but he didn't care because he lived in that gym. And now it's like, damn, where that used to be us just because we had to show that we were in there. It's like this dude wants to make it to the next level. He doesn't give a shit about anything else. These no dollars, about it. Right now, but I'm my bag is coming next year when I go to the league. And those, no doubt those about dudes it. Are, those dudes are and you could them. tell that, and you could tell that just by Jalen Hood Shafino social media presence. He wasn't a big social media guy. Yeah, he right. very he very rarely posted shit. Yeah. And you know that that spoke volumes, and I think that's why he was so successful and got got better at such a rapid rate because because of that. You know, once he honed in and once he focused. But Derek, I do want to get everybody want to talk about we lost Jalen Hood Shafino, bro. I don't want to hear that, bro. That's that's part of it, you know. That's, yeah. that's, that's part. Of, that's part of the yeah. game these days. Like I said, we everybody, everybody young, everybody building teams every year. Um, we, that's not no excuse for us just because we in a situation. You know what I'm saying? I think that's where the coaching staff has got to do a better job. I know they. I know they actually know they got to do a better job, man. Yeah. So, um, uh, I don't. I, I mean, we are where we are at right now. It's time to, you know. Finish the season as best as we can. Hopefully, we finish over five hundred. Hopefully, I mean, you know. Hopefully, see, guys still still believe and we can win a couple games in the tournament. And at least make it. At least make it interesting. You know what I'm saying? Like, like man, yeah. give me give me some, Derek. Right. Like, make it. Did you let us? Did you see? Let us get a what? <laughs> did you see Ken Palm put out? And Ken Palm can kiss my ass. I never really looked at Ken Palm. Didn't care about it. Some people believe in it. I never did. But for those who did believe, they said our best chance at. Another win this season was at Penn State, and they gave us a thirty-three percent chance of winning. Yeah, Ugh. I can believe that. I can believe that, bro. But you know, <laughs> with, 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 with just what we displayed, but you know, I don't, I don't. Like I said, I know those players and those coaches ain't looking at no, ain't looking at no Ken Palm. Bro. I didn't know who the fuck Ken Palm, who Ken or Palm was when I was in school. <laughs> when I was in school, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I know, and I know they probably looking at it the same way, bro. So. We just gotta we just we just gotta make changes, man. I'm sorry, bro. We gotta make we gotta make changes, bro. Yeah, I mean, you I mean, at at this rate, man. Like I said last season, last episode that I did, I didn't see a way into the tournament. I absolutely don't see one now. So, like, you got to start building from here, man. And it's like what Coach Green did. So, I mean, Coach Green did some did some shit. Man, let's now. just let's just get some momentum, Derek. Let's just get some That's momentum it, right? going into the next year. Like. Exactly. Let's just get some momentum, bro. Let's just look better. Let's just play hard. Let's just show fight. Yeah. Let's yeah, just show that. It. Let's just start right there. Yeah. And then that's let it. everything else, you know what I'm saying, fall and, and do whatever. We know we're going to have a lot of moving pieces and stuff like that. But, you know, let's just chalk this season up for what it is, bro. Let's just try to get better. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, let's just focus on us and let's just try to be the best we can be. And that's who it. knows? We might we may be still a couple games here and there. You know what I'm saying? That's hey, hey, anything anything else you got to say, bro? I mean, I know we we tight on time, man. We running out, man. But anything else you got to say, bro? Oh man, just how good you look in them glasses, baby. Keep bringing those every episode. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I feel right to put these on today, bro. You know, what Looks man? Good. I, Looks hey, man, good. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. But anyway, man, I think that concludes our episode. You guys reach out to us, man. Tell us what you think. Um, tell us if you agree with us or not. Reach out to us. We love to talk IU basketball. That's what we do. Um, that's what we do this for a day. We do this because we enjoy doing it. You know what that's I'm right. saying? More, more so than anything, bro. So, right. right. Appreciate you guys, man. That concludes right, the episode. Baby.
We're out.